Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. This is the third video in the series on load line analysis. In the first video, I laid the foundations for understanding what is going on as we proceed through this process. If you missed that video, there's a link up in the corner for you and down in the description just for your convenience. In the second video, I walk through the process of setting up the DC and AC load lines for a very simple common emitter transistor circuit with a capacitively coupled load on its output. If you missed that one, there's a link up in the corner and, of course, down in the description for you as well. In this video, I am now going to take this one step further with a bit more complex example which is more in keeping with what you might see. I'm going to develop the DC and AC load lines for this beta-stabilized common emitter transistor circuit with a split emitter resistor. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, let's dive into our circuit for load line analysis. Well, what we're looking at here is a very common beta-stabilized common emitter circuit. We have the voltage divider bias set up in the base circuit with R1 and R2. We also have a split emitter resistor RE1 and RE2. Now, I've put a bypass capacitor across the bottom resistor RE2. The top resistor RE1 gives us direct control over the gain. The top and bottom resistors work together with the base bias resistors to establish the quiescent operating point of the circuit. Well, I'm not going to go through the circuit analysis here, but here are the numbers for the actual calculated quiescent operating point. The quiescent collector emitter voltage, VCEQ, is 5.152 volts. The quiescent collector current, ICQ, is 1.475 milliamps. Now, let's create the DC load line. Well, here is the family of transistor curves we're going to be using. I generated this family specifically for a DC current gain of 200 using a 2N3904 transistor. We begin the process of creating the DC load line as always by writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation around the collector emitter circuit. So we get the power supply voltage, VCC, minus the voltage across the collector resistor, VRC, minus the collector emitter voltage, VCE, minus the voltage across the top emitter resistor, VRE1, minus the voltage across the lower emitter resistor, VRE2, is equal to zero. Because the capacitor is invisible to DC, we can consider the two emitter resistors as a single resistor of 604 ohms. I will call this RE. We know by Ohm's law that the voltage across the collector resistor VRC is equal to the collector current times the value of the resistor. And the voltage across the emitter resistor, VRE, is equal to the emitter current times the value of the emitter resistor. Now, I'm going to introduce you to an engineering approximation that is commonly used. We know that the emitter current is equal to beta plus 1 divided by beta times the collector current. Now, suppose that the DC current gain of the transistor, beta, is 100. Then the emitter current, IE, is equal to 101 divided by 100 times IC. That means that the emitter current is equal to 1.01 times the collector current which means that the value of the emitter current is very, very close to the value of the collector current, IC. For this reason, we can estimate the emitter current is essentially equal to the collector current for this analysis. Okay, now we take all of this 
and put it into our KVL equation, and we get VCC minus the collector current IC times RC minus VCE minus the collector current times RE is all equal to zero. Putting in values from our design, we now have 10 minus IC times 2.68K minus VCE minus IC times 604 ohms all equals zero. Combining all the like terms, we get this modified KVL equation, which I will use from here. 10 minus the collector current IC times 3.284K minus VCE is equal to zero. Now we are ready to create our DC load line. We have three points to plot on our graph, and the first two points we plot by asking two questions. Question one, what is the collector emitter voltage when the collector current is zero? We go back to our modified KVL equation to get 10 minus zero times 3.284K minus VCE is all equal to zero, and we solve all of this for VCE, and we get a value of 10 volts. We plot this point on our graph. Question two, what is the collector current when the collector emitter voltage is zero? Well, going back to our KVL equation, that would give us 10 minus IC times 3.284K minus zero volts, all equals zero. Solving this for the collector current, I get the collector current is equal to 3.045 milliamps. And we plot this point on our graph. Now we draw a line between these points. This is the DC load line. But it's not quite complete yet. We need to plot the quiescent operating point on our graph. First, I locate the quiescent collector emitter voltage of 5.152 volts it's on the horizontal axis and draw a line up through the DC load line. Then I locate the quiescent collector current of 1.475 milliamps on the vertical axis and draw a horizontal line through the DC load line. Isn't it so nice? The DC load line and these two lines all meet at the same spot. So let's place a dot on this spot. Now we can go on to the AC load line. To begin the process of creating the AC load line, we have to prepare our schematic for AC analysis. To do this, we have to make some modifications so that it reflects what the AC signal sees. Now, this gets a bit weird because most of us, we tend to think in terms of the DC world. But let's walk through these steps one at a time. And by the way, these are the steps and the assumptions made in the general electrical engineering community for this particular process. Step one, we short all of the DC sources. Well, we can do this because the DC sources are just as much of an AC ground as ground itself is. Step two, short all capacitors. We are making the assumption that the capacitor reactance is a low enough value that we can estimate it to be a short. Yeah, I know that this is not always the case, but this is what we do for the approximation used for this analysis. In our circuit, this puts a short across the 336 ohm lower emitter resistor, essentially taking it out of the circuit from an AC point of view. Step three, simplify the schematic. Well, in the base circuit, the end of R1 that used to be connected to VCC is now at ground, so that end swings around next to R2. We now have R1 in parallel with R2. 
In a similar manner, the collector resistor goes from the collector to ground. The emitter circuit now has a single 268 ohm resistor between emitter and ground. Step 4. Write the KVL around the collector emitter loop remembering our standard conventions. We get the voltage across the collector resistor VRC plus the collector emitter voltage VCE plus the voltage across the emitter resistor VRE1 is equal to zero. And Ohm's law tells us that the voltage across the collector resistor VRC is equal to the current through it times the value of it. It also tells us a similar story about the emitter resistor that the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to the emitter current times the value of the emitter resistor. Now, I'm going to apply our engineering approximation to this that the emitter current is essentially equal to the collector current. So, the voltage across the emitter resistor is equal to the collector current times the emitter resistor value. Now, let's put all of this into our KVL equation. That gives us IC times RC plus VCE plus IC times RE1 all equals zero. Now, we're going to be plotting this on a graph where VCE is on the horizontal axis and IC is on the vertical or Y axis. So we want to get this in the form of the collector current is equal to the collector emitter voltage times some constant. So first, we're going to gather like terms together, which gives us IC times the quantity RC plus RE1 plus VCE all equals zero. We subtract VCE from both sides, which gives us IC times the quantity RC plus RE1 is equal to minus VCE. Then we divide both sides by the quantity RC plus RE1, and that gives us the collector current IC is equal to minus VCE divided by the quantity RC plus RE1. And finally, we rearrange things just a little bit to get VCE out in front of the expression on the right to get our final form the collector current IC is equal to VCE times the quantity minus 1 divided by the quantity RC plus RE1. This quantity minus 1 divided by RC plus RE1 is the slope of our AC load line. Now, we know that this passes through the quiescent operating point of the DC load line when our AC input voltage Vn is equal to zero. And we also know that the quiescent collector emitter voltage VCEQ is 5.152 volts. The quiescent collector current ICQ is 1.475 milliamps. The collector resistor RC is 2.68K, and the upper emitter resistor RE1 is 268 ohms. We put all of these known values into our equation and we get 1.475 milliamps is equal to 5.152 volts times the quantity minus 1 divided by 2.68k plus 268 plus some unknown constant. Solving for the unknown constant we get that the combined collector current is equal to the combined collector emitter voltage times minus 1 over 2948 plus 3.2226 milliamps. Now we get to ask our two load line questions. Question 1. What is the collector emitter voltage VCE when the collector current IC is equal to zero? Putting this into our AC load line equation, we get zero 
is equal to VCE times the quantity minus 1 over 2948 plus 3.2226 milliamps. We solve this for VCE and we get a value of 9.5 volts. We plot this point on our graph. Notice that it isn't the same as it was for the DC load line. Question 2. What is the collector current IC when the collector emitter voltage VCE is zero? Again, sticking this reality into our equation for the AC load line, we get that the collector current IC is equal to zero times minus one over 2948 plus 3.2226 milliamps. We solve this for the collector current IC and we get a value of 3.2226 milliamps. And we plot this on our graph. Notice yet again that this is not the same as the DC load line. We draw our line between these two points and it passes right through the quiescent operating point of the DC load line just as it should. Notice that it has a steeper slope than the DC load line meaning that the gain is less. The actual voltage gain of the entire circuit is 9.34. Now, if we did not have the capacitor across the lower emitter resistor, the AC load line and the DC load line would have been identical to each other and the voltage gain of the whole circuit would have dropped to 4.29. Now, you say, w wait a second. The AC load line with the capacitor shows less gain than the AC load line without the capacitor, yet the actual overall gain of the circuit is greater with the capacitor than without the capacitor. How, how is that possible? Well, the answer to that question is in the next video. So you ask, what is the whole point of this load line analysis exercise anyway? And that is a very good question. It is a question that I will be answering in the next video answering two poignant questions about load line analysis. Now, I've put a link to this video up in the corner and in the description for you. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and, well, of course, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots!